Hello everyone, my name is Benedict Terry, still on with these reviews since they apparently rake in the views. So, a bit late to mention it, but new year, new beginnings, that means it's time for me to talk about a new animation legend, specifically... <laughs> this guy, Tex Avery. Every massive exaggerated face, every over-the-top visual gag, you can thank him for it. And to demonstrate what he brought to the animation table, I will review one of his works, the unsuspectingly titled A Day at the Zoo. Released on March 11th, 1939, this cartoon is very easily seen by many as ahead of its time. And this is going to be an interesting experiment for me personally, because in terms of story, there isn't any. Yep, this one completely shuns narrative in favour of quick-shot visual gags, something that Tex Avery would adopt as a signature. But I will do my best to detail what's going on plot-wise. So, get your binoculars out and your animal spotters guide ready, we're going to the zoo today! Here we are at one of the country's most interesting zoos. Uh-huh, it certainly will be interesting, and Tex Avery wastes no time getting to what we're all here for. Uh, who's being fed? The animals or the visitors? Hmm. Let's just go in. Here we find the wolf in his natural setting. Well, it was still the Great Depression. A pack of camels. All the best doctors smoked them. This is quite clearly a pencil. I don't encourage smoking, by the way. Next, we head to the monkey cage, where we have an incident with a man who looks remarkably like a baboon. Luckily, I don't mean what you think I mean. Basically, there's a guest who looks very much like a baboon, so an actual baboon decides to swap themselves out. That could have easily been a million times more awkward. There's also an old lady who tries to feed a capuchin monkey when suddenly... Hey sister! Can't you read? <laughs> wow, have you ever been so shocked that you just slide right across the background like that? <laughs> After a brief bit involving the groundhog and its shadow, for obvious reasons, we come across... <laughs> a kid with a death wish. Hey, hey, don't annoy that line. It's dangerous. Can't you read that sign? Don't worry, people. He doesn't learn his lesson, so we'll be seeing much more of him later. The skunk cage is always a center of interest. I do pity the skunk, though. So soft and fluffy, but no one wants to go near it. Ah, oh, well. This is followed by the giraffe's feeding time, and then... We're back here again. Now, fella, this is the second time I've had to speak to you. Leave that line alone. I'm warning you. I'm a bad boy. You and most wannabe edgelords. Well, next is the obligatory cute moment, because it is still the 1930s. And here we come to a family of white rabbits. Now you get one guess as to how Tex Avery flips this one on its head. Guess. Of course, you all know how fast they multiply. Know what I mean? Nudge, 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 wink, wink, say them all know what I mean. Now it's time to look at some birds. Now over here in the birdhouse, we find the wise old owl. Who? You. Me? Yes. Ooh. It is embarrassing when you can't live up to your expectations. Over here, we find Mother Ostrich on her nest. <laughs> Whoa! I never imagined an ostrich sounding like a chicken before. But she trips over a bucket and... Well, a jackpot. Hmm, talk about a lucky break. <sighs> Again? I mean, seriously, isn't there an anti-lockdown rally you could be attending? Okay, granted, teasing a lion's not as stupid as that, but... <sighs> anyway, speaking of elephants in the room, here is an actual elephant. This is Joe Jumbo. We'll send it up right away. You know, those guys have had my twunk for a week. 
I'm not going to ask how that happened. And here we have, uh, well, <laughs> these are some things we had left over from that last New Year's party. We got a little eager to bid good riddance to 2020. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Our trip concludes with big cats, such as these restless panthers, bread and butter, bread and butter, bread and butter, and the Rocky Mountain Wildcat. What made me wild? Well, I'll tell you. They called my name out at bank night, and I wasn't there! Well, that explains the wild part. We also get a special guest called J. Wellington Buttonhook. Mr. Buttonhook used to thrill thousands at the circus by putting his head in a lion's mouth. Jeez, knowing America, that's gonna cost a fortune to sort out. And speaking of which, let's check in with the lion, shall we? Well, I guess that little fellow finally took my advice and went home. But of course, what the narrator said is sadly not the case. Calm <laughs> as a pain, isn't it? So, final thoughts? Easily a thumbs up. Yes, I agree, this cartoon was definitely ahead of its time. It really helped to define the comedy cartoons of the following decade, something that Tex Avery himself would be part of. And it certainly took a risk by abandoning story in favour of rapid fire blink and you miss it gags. So long story short, it's a great introduction to Tex Avery, and if you want a good laugh, he's got you covered. Though I do heed caution with some of his other works. If you know your classic cartoons, you know exactly what I mean. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe to get first dibs on my new videos whenever I can upload them. <laughs> so, until next time, sayonara!